Well, hey, welcome to New Point, where we believe that what God did in the past is always, always greater than anything you've done in yours. We wanna welcome you to New Point Online. Here, we're passionate about three things, connecting with God, connecting with others, and connecting others to God. Now, in order to do that, we provided a couple resources that are simple. One is our website, newpoint.org. Simply go there, check out the different things that we have for you. The other is a mobile version of that. It's our app. If you go to newpoint.org slash app, you'll have all of those resources and tools with you no matter where you go. Now, I'm excited about today's service and I'm excited about what God's gonna speak to you today. But before we get there, I wanna let you know that New Point is a church that is for our communities. That means we love to bless and impact communities all over the world. And it's because of your faithful generosity and God's faithfulness to us as a church that we are able to make a difference in communities all, all around the world. And so I wanna thank you for your giving and your faithfulness in seeing the need and meeting it. If you're looking to give today here at New Point, I wanna encourage you, go to newpoint.org slash give and give today. Now, I don't know about you, but I love music and music and song are one of the ways that we worship God here at New Point. So wherever you are, maybe you wanna stand or just sit, but let's go in and enjoy the rest of what God has for us today.
You know, there's a line there in that song that says, every burden will be lifted in his presence and every trophy will be laid at his feet. I love that because sometimes, you know, we go through life and we, you know, accumulate successes and achievements, what we would see as maybe trophies of what we've done. But sometimes after a while, they become burdens to us or maybe just stuff over time becomes burdensome. You know, we, we go through life and we take on different things, but there's something about the presence of God. And I love that we just sang about, you know, just his glory and his power and his majesty in the sense that when you come into his presence, it says that every burden will be lifted. I don't know where you are today, but are you in a place, man, where you're just feeling the weight, the burden just at a place? You don't know how it got there. It didn't get there in just one moment, but maybe over time, each and every day, it got heavier and heavier. And, and you felt like, man, if I could just succeed more, it'll, it'll get lighter for me, but it's only gotten heavier. I wanna encourage you with something. In his presence, every burden will be lifted. I believe that wherever you are today, God wants to lift your burdens and remind you that he's in control, not you, that he is. A value we hold dear here at New Point is that God wants to connect with you. He's not a God who lives far off and, and just watching you and watching your failures or watching your successes. He's a God who wants to interact with you. That means right now, wherever you are, he wants to meet with you. He wants to connect with you. And so I want to encourage you, whatever you're carrying, okay, it doesn't always have to be something bad, but if it's heavy, it's weighing you down. It's weighing you down and you need to give it to him. And in, in his presence, every burden is lifted. So would you take a moment today and allow that weight to be shifted and let him take it? Just between you and the Lord, tell him your burden right now. Tell him your weight. Tell him the things that are weighing on you and give it to him right now. Father, I'm so thankful that you are a God who is a burden bearer. God, you take our weight, you take our burdens, you take our successes and our failures. You take the shame of our past, God, you take it and you give us new life. I love that in your word, it says your mercies are new every morning. And I know for some of us, that's exactly what we need to experience today, right now, your mercy. And we need it new, God, not yesterday stuff, God, today. And Lord, whoever is carrying that weight and whoever is carrying the burden of shame, regret, or, or the, the weight of responsibility, God, Meet them right where they're at. Remind them, Lord, every step you're with them. I thank you so much that you are a God who's near, that you're near to the broken, you're near to us. You're not running away. So come and God, remind us of that right here, right where we are. We give you thanks. We ask for you to just continue to speak to us through the remain remainder of this service, God. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Well, hey, we're getting ready to hear another great message from the series, This Is Us, where we're discovering more about who we are, how it relates to one another, how it relates to God, and how it relates to his church. This week, Dwight's going to be talking about the heart triad. It's going to be great. Get your notes out. It's going to be a great message. Take a listen. Hello, New Point. I want to welcome each of our physical campuses across Ohio and anyone joining us online across the world. 
Have I told you lately that I love you? I really do, and I'm thankful for each and every one of you. I'm excited about the stories that I'm hearing across all of our campuses of what God is doing. So I'm very, 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 very thankful. Now, here at New Point, we're centered around helping people to realize and reach their full potential in Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, that's why we exist. And that's why we're teaching this series, This Is Us. We've been taking a deeper look at why we do what we do and who we are and how it affects us and how it affects our relationship with one another. You see, we're wanting to understand at a deeper level who we are and how it relates to God, our creator, how it relates to the people in our life, and how it relates to his church. Now, to do that, we've been using a tool or a resource called the Enneagram, and it's a tool that has been developed many, 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 many years ago by what is called the Desert Fathers. Now, the Desert Fathers were Christian leaders who were devoted to doctrine and consecration, okay? Very devoted men, and uh, they used it as a spiritual transformation tool. Now, it's a hot topic today among many, many different circles, and it's not copyrighted, and so people have, have taken advantage of it and have used it in many, many different ways. Some of them have twisted it, and they don't use it as a spiritual formation tool to connect with God. But let me be clear, okay? It is a tool and it is not a substitute for the word of God. Now, we've had a couple of people who have already benefited by it greatly. Matter of fact, more than a couple of people. Many, many people have told me, hey, you know what, Dwight? I've been engaged with my spouse over what number I am and what number they are, and it's created unique conversations and with my kids and, and, and even with my coworkers. And so it's already helped many, many people, and I wanna encourage you to have those conversations because it's important to be able to understand one another. Now, if this is the first week that you are joining us, I wanna encourage you also to listen to the last three messages, okay? It will help you tremendously in understanding the different personality types of the Enneagram, and you can access those by going to newpoint.org slash this is up. Now, up till now, we have been basically saying this, there's a self to lose and a self to find. And that God has designed you and I to be authentic, to be genuine, to be whole. And he wants you and I to live out that design. And yet we often choose the adaptive self. We, we, we drift to this adaptive self that many of us have picked up in our childhood on ways in which we can survive and get what we want. But the fact of the matter, and here's the good news, here's the gospel. Because of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice he made, you and I can choose to shed or to get rid of the adapted self and be able to embrace the authentic self the genuine self that God has for you and I because of the person of Jesus Christ. Now, last week, we looked at the gut triad. And, and I'm an eight, okay, and I was part of that eight, nines, and ones. And, and we found out that really the main issue there is anger. And this week, we wanna look at the heart triad. And the heart triad is comprised of the personalities two, three, and four. And those who are in the heart triad have a focus that is on their value and their identity. And their concern is their image or how other people see them, which can create tremendous problems associated with their identities. And so types two, three, and four share similar assets, okay, and liabilities around their feelings. They have a tendency to engage in life and circumstances through their feelings. That's why they're typically known as feelers, okay? Their emotional struggle is shame. Not anger, but shame. And this means that they struggle very much with the feelings of guilt and shame for how they feel others perceive them, whether it's a spouse, whether it's their kids, whether it's their friends. And the common desire they share 
and focus on has to do with wanting to be significant and their identity. And until they become aware of how they are affected by this, you know what? They'll always struggle in life with their own image. And what will happen is this, you'll build up even hostility and it'll become a main issue and a struggle for you with the people in your life. Now each type of the two, the three and the four process this completely differently, okay? Um, and we have to understand that. And people in this group chiefly are guarded by their emotional qualities that sustain relationships with others. Things like recognition, okay? Social inclusion, emotional support. Where the gut, okay, triad focuses on the inner sense of control, the heart triad focuses on the outward. And so if you are two or three or four, you're asking questions like this, how am I perceived by others? Do people like me? What can I do to develop these relationships that I want? And above all, the heart triad wants others to pay attention to them. They want to be noticed. And if their needs are recognized and not met, then the heart will react in panic, in, in, in a longing for recognition or sadness or above all, shame, and that's not good. They'll feel flawed or undeserving if others are not actively and continually appreciating their contributions. And so what happens is you have to seek a balance by evaluating your emotions instead of looking just for the external approval. And so let's take a look at some of the common priorities of the heart triad, okay, the twos, threes, and fours. Here's what we see. Meet the need for connection, they wanna connect, okay? And then receive recognition, and then gain empathy. They want people to have empathy for them. And, and, and if you're trying to cast off the sin or the struggle that so easily entangles you, if you're in this heart triad, you will need to know how to deal with your shame. Now twos and fours will naturally want to control the shame. Threes will just say, I don't have any shame. They'll just naturally deny it. And so what we wanna do is we wanna come back and say, okay, how can I shed the adapted self and how can I embrace the authentic self? And I want us to look at this verse that we looked at last week, Hebrews chapter 12, verses one through three, because we learn a lot here. And here's what he says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us. For, for the, the gut triad, it's anger. For the heart triad, it's shame and the sin that so easily entangles us. You know what he's doing here? He's commanding you and I to examine our life about what we are doing and why we're doing it. And he's saying, be ruthless about what stays in your life and what goes in your life. He continues and he says, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Listen, it all comes back to Jesus. We wanna be more like Jesus. And he says, let us run with what? Perseverance, determination, be patient. Don't delay, be patient, but be steadfast. Don't be distracted. Keep your eyes on the goal of shedding your adapted self and experiencing the authentic person that God wants you to be. And then he goes on, he says, for the joy set before him, Jesus, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, Jesus looked beyond the cross, that's why he could endure and persevere. And when you and I look beyond our adapted self and say, God wants me to be authentic, he wants me to be whole, then what happens is it'll help you with the determination and to be able to develop a sense of endurance to push through and to be able to let go of those things that hinder you and the sin that so easily entangles you. So let us take a look at each of these personalities in the heart triad today and how it relates to God, to others, to the church, all right? So let's look, all right? Here's, here's type two, the helper. The childhood message is this. It's not okay to have needs of your own. Wow, 
It's not okay to have needs of your own. So if, if, if you are too growing up, you may have felt loved only if you were helping or pleasing other people. And having personal needs were basically being selfish. And as a result, you closed off your own needs and feelings and you tuned into the needs and the feelings of other people. And love became defined as giving others to others. Though, okay, maybe you didn't receive love back. And so that's the childhood message. It's not okay to have needs of your own. But here's the cool thing about twos. Look at this. Divine gifts, God's unconditional love and care because you know how important that is. The core striving is to be needed. The distorted belief, this is what we need to shed, okay? I'm not lovable if I don't serve selfishly, selflessly, focus of attention on the needs of others. We need to shed that to some degree. And then the root sin is pride because if, if you're not careful to, it's because you serve so much and you focus on other people, you can feel prideful about that. The avoidance is their own needs and desires. You gotta have that self-care, all right? And then the primary fears is being useless and unappreciated, but the transformational growth that God wants to bring into your life to bring you to that point of, of being authentic is humility and pure love that you serve with an incredible amount of energy and intentionality, but you're no better than anybody else, okay? Now, how does a two relate to God, okay? Well, God is a merciful servant, all loving, completely compassionate, and would drop everything for the one in need. And because twos have this view of God, it can be very difficult for them to think that following Christ would involve any measure of self-care because you're always focused on the other person. And there can be an overwhelming sense of guilt if you can't meet everyone's needs, whether it's your kids, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your friends. And so it's hard for you to say no, isn't it? It is. And if a two doesn't fully accept the unconditional love of God, what happens is you will try and work for it. You will try and work for it. And you know what? You can never work for God's love. You see, listen, when we partner, when we partner with God to help others, we can be thankful for his good work and we can celebrate what he does. That's how we should relate to God. To others, when a two feels like they are not being useful, they feel disconnected. And so what happens is a two has a tendency to go into overdrive or they have a tendency to overfunction, to try to figure out a way in which they can make a contribution or be helpful so they can be what? Recognized. And so twos have a hard time living with boundaries. And so they dismiss their own needs. And if they're not careful, then they end up playing the martyr card, okay? They can unintentionally believe that no one cares for them or that no one appreciates all that they do. And so li listen to me twos, if you're a two, it's not going to come natural for you to ask for help or express what you really want or what you really need. In fact, if you're in a relationship with a two right now, let me give you some, some counsel, okay? Be very intentional about asking them for what, they, uh, what you want them to take on or what you want them to do. You see, what happens is a typical two will constantly say, yes, 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 and it becomes physically impossible, emotionally impossible for them to complete the task. And so, if you're in a relationship with a two, you wanna start the conversation with, so how's things going? How are you doing? What are you doing? Before asking them to do something. And it takes a, a two time and permission to take an honest look of what they have going on in their life because their tendency is to say yes, 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 yes. And so if you're in a relationship with the two, encourage them to take care of themselves. Give them permission to say no. Remind them not to neglect their own life. And then their relationship to the church, in the church, twos will be the people who will serve, serve, serve. Listen, if you're looking for a volunteer, a two will say yes. What do you want me to do? How can I help? because they're very easy 
to go to and ask for help because they have a joy in experiencing serving like no one else. The problem is their guilt can steal their joy and it can turn it into an obligation. And once it turns into an obligation that they feel like they have to do it, they, 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 can, they can lose their joy. And what happens is their identity is tied to their ability to accomplish anything and everything that they're being asked to do or that they've committed themselves to do. But here's what we need to understand. No one can do everything because it will lead to burnout and exhaustion. Even Jesus rested. So if you're a two, let me tell you, the church absolutely needs you. We want you, but not just for what you do. And God wants you to receive his love. God wants you to receive his love. He wants you to sit at his feet and say, you know what? You're my son, you're my daughter. And yes, I appreciate all that you're doing, but I'm in love with who you are. And what will happen to you is you will find yourself, okay, more effective when your full focus can be pulled or can be focused on fewer things and not the busyness all around you. So twos, God loves you. He cares about you. He appreciates what you do, but he loves you for who you are. How about type three? Type three, the achiever. Childhood message, it's not okay for you to have your own feelings and identity. Wow. As a, as a three, probably you felt rewarded for what you did and how well you did it. And so your feelings were discounted or ignored. And only your performance, only your performance was what really matter to those around you. And this could develop into ability of where you had a hard time accepting yourself or loving yourself or loving others. And so you have to realize that you are valuable, okay? And that your feelings and your identity are important and God cares about you. Now let's learn more about the, the, the achiever. The divine gift is hope and radiance. Okay, that's what you bring to the table. We love it, all right? Core striving is to appear successful. That's something that you might have to, to throw off that might hinder you, okay? The distorted belief, I am what I do, that's a lie, okay? Uh, the focus of attention is on tasks and goals. You might have to throw that off a little bit because people will get in the way and you'll just run over them if all you're doing is focusing on tasks and goals. And then the root of sin is deceit or vainglory that you might project an image that's not completely accurate or true about you. And then the avoidance is failure and, and incompetence, that you wanna avoid failure, okay? Your primary fears is being incapacitated or unadmired, okay? But here's the growth opportunity for the threes, all right? Truthfulness and trust. Tell yourself the truth. Hey, you know what? I'm in a season of where I'm struggling and I'm not gonna project that I'm more successful than what I am. And I'm gonna trust God to help me with the challenges that are in front of me. And, and, and so how do you reclaim the love that God has for you, okay? So that what happens is you begin to understand that he loves you not for what you do, but for who you are. Well, let's look at our relationship with God, okay? Threes can struggle to think that God loves them for their performance and not for who they are. And that if you fail, if you mess up, he may look at you differently. And, and a three needs to accept the fact that God loves him. And it's not because of what you do. It's not because you're a great singer or you're a great speaker or you're a great fill in the blank. God just loves you. But three struggle with this because God's the master performer. God is consistently at work. He actually, okay, he actually is, is, is doing incredible things. Look at his creation. And so it's difficult for a three to look at this master per, masterful performer and think, that I shouldn't be that way too. That, you know what? I should always be busy. I should always be at work. And it's difficult for a three to believe that God created a Sabbath, a seventh day, to be able to rest. And so it's because of that mindset that a three feels that, that God is the audience that they're playing for. And so what happens is they have to do something great. They have to do something remarkable to be able to get his attention. And it can be easy for threes to feel like the bigger the stage, the more proof that God's favor is on my life, that God's anointing is on my life, that I'm really successful.
successful and it's nearly impossible for a three to feel accepted and insignificant at the same time. And this is the performance mentality that a three has to deal with because they feel that God plays favorites. And that if a three is not experiencing success, if they're not getting the promotions, if they're not getting the raises, if they're not building a bigger house, then somehow God has abandoned them and doesn't care for them. And it would benefit every three, listen to me, every three to know that you are loved and already approved. And that the appearance of success is not God's measure of love for you. He loves you just the way that you are, for who you are. Now, how does threes relate to others, okay? They have an unquestionable desire to be successful. This means that their relationships can suffer because there can be that emotional detachment. You know what I mean? There's this, this acute awareness of what others think of them. And many times, if we're not careful as threes, if you're a three, you can view people as a means to an end. And it's not intentional, but there's such a thirst for success and achievement that, that you can end up using people. And, and so one day, somebody might think that you're their best friend, and then you don't talk to them for three weeks because you don't need them. Now, if you're married to a three, if you're in relationship with a three, what you need to do is you need to set aside time to be able to talk to them and let them know that you love them regardless of what they provide or what they do. Remind them that none of the things that they have achieved or the success that they have experienced would ever change their love for you and that you just love them for who they are. A three needs to hear that over and over and over again. Now, what about their relationship with the church, okay? Now, threes gain a sense of identity from what they do, and they're not going to have an overwhelming sense to serve or to be in an area of ministry that is quote unquote not seen, okay? They're gonna wanna be on the stage. They're gonna wanna gravitate to the place of where they're recognized and that people can see that they are, 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 are great and that, and that they're noticed. And so here's what I want you to know. That's not all bad threes, okay? We need you in the church. But remember, remember all that you do in the church, okay? Everything that you do in the church is to serve from his approval, not for his approval. And so I want to let you know that God's not unsure about you. He knows you. He loves you. He has given you everything you need to be truly successful. And because of Christ in you, okay, you are valued simply for being yourself. And you can rest in his accomplishments instead of your accomplishments. Let's look at this last one in the heart triad, and that is the type for the individualist. This is the child's message. It is not okay to be too much and not enough. Wow. Now, if you are a four, maybe you felt abandoned um, by a caretaker, okay? Maybe you felt alone, or maybe you felt cut off from the source of love for reasons that maybe you have never understood and still don't understand today. You know, what you have to understand is maybe you feel that, that you weren't seen, you weren't cared for, you weren't loved in the way in which you needed to be or desired to be, and so you felt different from your parents, and as a result, what happened is you may have turned your, in, your feelings inward, and so you went to the imagination route to cope with isolation, and so guess what? Now you're really creative, and that's a good thing, though, but you need to realize, okay, that this is a lie. It's okay. It's okay for you to be true to your feelings and to be able to admit your feelings. Now, what else can we learn about the four, the individualist? Well, here's what you bring to the table, and it's God's divine gift to you, God's creativity and depth, and we thank you for that. The core striving is to be unique, all right? The distorted belief is I'm inherently deficient. You need to get rid of that. That's going to hinder you, okay? The focus of attention is on what's missing, FOMO, fear of missing out, okay, that can really be a problem in your life. The root of sin is envy, thinking that everybody else has it better than you. The avoidance is being ordinary or blending in. 
The primary fears is being unknown or abandoned, but here's the growth opportunity for the fours, okay? And that is contentment and gratitude. Contentment and gratitude. That you know what, God just loves you and be thankful for that. Now, how do you relate to God? How do you relate to God? Well, God is unique, right? And God is creative, we would all agree with that. And ordinary is not how you want to view your relationship with God because he's vast, he's awesome, his creation is amazing. And as a four, you absolutely love understanding and discovering new aspects of who God is. Why? Because you're creative. Unfortunately, sometimes for fours, okay, when you look at God, you can feel just average or ordinary. And, and, and whenever you feel average or ordinary, what happens is if your thinking isn't right, you will think that that's the disapproval of God or that God is distant from you because there's a strong desire in you, okay, to have this special relationship with God and be able to connect with him and understand him like no one else. And so fours, let me help you with something, okay? You would benefit from understanding that you're already special. You're already unique. You don't have to prove it to anybody. Your heavenly father says that you're good enough in Christ. And God has a special plan and a special purpose for your life. And I promise you, listen, you're not gonna miss out on anything. You don't have to envy anybody. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fulfilling, it's gonna be fruitful, it's gonna be creative. And so that's how I encourage you to relate to God. How about to others? Well, you're very sensitive to the moods and the feelings of others, and you're able to empathize fully with other people. But one moment, you're able to exude happiness, and then the next moment, if you're not careful for us, you're full of sadness and blue. And so you can fall into the trap of expecting more from your relationship that is realistic and that not everybody can meet those expectations that you have. Now, fours are willing to help out. They're willing to, 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 to serve people in that way, but I want you to see how God has already made you unique and special. And so, if you're relating to a four, appreciate their uniqueness. Appreciate their contribution to your life. Appreciate uh, uh, um, and help them appreciate what's going on around them and they will grow and they will flourish in that. To the church, hey listen, fours, you're needed. You're absolutely a necessity because you are creative and that's what the church needs to reach the world. Okay, you're compassionate, you're sensitive to people. And, and, and so I, I want you to know that we need you. Now you need to understand that not everybody's gonna understand you right off the bat, your creativity, okay? They're not gonna understand that, but there's a place for you. Just be patient with us, okay? And, and, and we need to be patient with you as well because there's not always a path of understanding that happens immediately, okay? Sometimes your thoughts might be obscured, because they're original, nobody's ever thought that, and so it's hard for us to process that. Now, here's what I want you to understand. For your approach is different than everybody else. That's why sometimes you're misunderstood. But we want you to know that we love you, and the church needs you. And so continue to create. Continue to remember, though, that God loves the ordinary and the unique. You see, not everyone is going to be able to fully understand you, and that's okay. But God wants you to learn to challenge yourself, to grow, and to be able to realize that, you know what, ordinary sometimes isn't that bad, and that you can be content, and you can be full of gratitude with that. Now, as we look today at these three different types of personalities, twos and threes, and fours, here's what I want you to know. We're all called to work together in a process. You see, we are the body of Christ, and when we can work together and we appreciate the uniqueness of each individual, we come together, then the world looks and says, wow, something's happening there. How can those people work together when they're so different? 
But for those of you with the heart triad, okay, your issue is shame. And it will trigger you in many different ways. And it'll keep you from being the best version. It will keep you from being the authentic person that God wants you to be, the best version of who he created you to be. That's why we have to come back to this truth. And here's the truth. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. None. The word no there is in the strongest sense in the Greek. No, 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 no. Not ever in a million years will you ever be condemned. Isn't that great? So you can deal with that shame. You can deal with that shame. There is no shame for those who are in Christ Jesus. Your identity is not by what you do. It's who you know, and you know Jesus Christ. And so Proverbs would say this, above all else, heart triad, ready for this? Guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And so if if you're a two, a three, or a four, you need to... Above all else, guard your heart because you're going to deal with the issue of shame. And yet there's no condemnation for you or any of us who are in Christ Jesus. You see, there's a connection between our heart and our behavior. And when you guard your heart, you're guarding your identity. And only when you guard your heart will you be able to live out your true authentic self and say no to your adapted self. So I want to encourage you to do that. I wanna pray for you today. Would you bow your heads? God, we thank you today for who you are. Wow, we thank you that you have made us so different and so amazing. And you want all of us to embrace our authentic self. And I pray that specifically for the twos and the threes and the fours today. May we throw off that which hinders us, the shame and the sin that so easily entangles us so that we can run the race of who you want us to be. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you, Dwight, for another insightful message in this series called This Is Us. I don't know about you, but I'm discovering a lot more about my own personality, both strengths and weaknesses, things that I could be improving on. Now, maybe you're hearing Dwight's message today talking about the heart triad personalities two, three, and four, and you're going, you know what, I kind of relate, but I'm not sure. Maybe this is the first message that you've heard in this series. I wanna encourage you to utilize a resource that we wanna provide to you. It's go to newpoint.org slash this is us, and we've got some resources there for you. One, it'll deal with all the different types of the Enneagram, and it'll also offer a free assessment given to you so that you can get a little bit more insight as to what your personality type might be and maybe what your struggles and maybe your strengths are. And it'll give a lot more context to this entire series. So, hey, I want to thank you for joining us. We hope that you have a great day. I want to remind you of something that God is for you. So no matter what you go through this week, if God is for you, who can be against you? Have a great day.